My symptoms started with a small tremor in my hand. It made my handwriting very hard to read. Um, it progressed on to some stuttering, slurred speech, um, and then tremors increased to where I wasn't able to feed myself, cut food, do daily functions. I was referred to a neurologist just in my local hometown. Um, was evaluated there and was told I had early onset Parkinson's disease. Medication was not helping at all. In fact, it was getting worse. And finally, I went to my family doctor and they referred me to the IU Neuroscience Center. Close your eyes now. And can you tell me the months of the year backwards? December, November. October. So she, she had a hard time walking, she was falling a lot, she was very, uh, and this is where this Parkinson's thing came up, she was very slow, stiff, uh, she had tremors, um, she had sort of a, a, a dystonic facial pattern, and that she had sort of this kind of shocked look to her face that we sometimes see, and it was quite clear uh, that it was not uh, a typical Parkinson's disease patient. Um, uh, besides her age, uh, she had some unusual features that we don't typically see um, in regular Parkinson's disease. And, um, you know, when you have a young patient uh, with, with these sorts of unusual features, um, it's always important to rule out something called Wilson's disease. There's a blood test that's helpful, and there's also a, um, an eye examination that we, that we do. And so actually that day that she came in, we were fortunate enough to have one of our neuro-ophthalmologists able to quickly see her do that, uh, do that evaluation, and, um, and they thought you know, it, was, it was consistent uh, with Wilson's. The doctor said, I believe you have Wilson's disease. I'm gonna go check on some things and I'll be right back. So while the doctor was gone, I had my husband Google. My tremors were so bad I couldn't hold my phone and search what Wilson's disease was, so he Googled it for me and said, it's a genetic thing, it's copper poisoning essentially. You have too much copper. Copper is in a lot of food that we eat. We don't want too little, we don't want too much, and so it's the job of the liver to be able to detect um, how much we have, and uh, its job is to get rid of all the excess copper that we don't need, uh, and that's done just through the bowels. So in Wilson's disease, that process in the liver, uh, it just, it can't do it well. We found out later um, that there was some, some liver injury that was going on too, um, that our GI doctors uh, kind of uh, looked into. She will require um, a multidisciplinary uh, management between neurology as well as liver specialists and that's really why we are so well suited to take care of complex patients like Emily. People in Indiana are fortunate that we have this incredible asset of uh, IU Health working side by side with IU Health physicians for innovative therapies. You know, what she needed is excellence in two specialties, working side by side, and also on the lookout for cutting edge therapies. We need to, we need to start getting rid of some of the copper that's, that's been accumulating uh, in the body. And so uh, there's a medicine that we use that's, that's approved for that. Um, and so that's what she, she eventually, we got her on, and it started dropping her copper levels, and, uh, and then she, she started to do a lot better. And open and close your fist, keep going. It was extreme relief that I could possibly get back to my normal self. At one of my follow-up appointments, I go see a liver and neuro twice a year just for maintenance and blood work. Um, they mentioned a clinical trial, and I decided to do that. She is a part of a, you know, a research trial now. Wilson's disease is a genetic disease, and so this process in the liver of getting rid of excess copper is dependent upon this particular transporter in the in the liver, um, and that's uh, uh, that's coded by a particular gene that is kind of disrupted in, in Wilson's disease. So, this is a, a treatment. It's an infusion that tries to basically replace the abnormal gene with a gene that is much more functional. This gene therapy, she was the first patient in the country to receive. 
this therapy and we're just proud that we were able to offer this at IU Health. It's possible she may be cured from Wilson's disease with this uh, clinical trial that she's participating in and I'm truly grateful for the opportunity to have been uh, of uh, help to her. As of December this past year, I am co completely off seeing her to care medication. I have videos from way back in the day and it's very difficult to watch those videos because it's like a different person. You can see yourself, but it's not you. And today I have a full-time job. I work at a school that I love my job. I have a four-year-old son, so it's nonstop, busy, busy, and I wouldn't ever go back.